Hello, this is Gunjan. I'm back again and I'm going to take you through how we use the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule in identifying and addressing mental health problems. Uh, let me give you some background. Uh, I have studied the 80-20 rule or applied it uh, and it's also called Pareto uh, across different fields from designing buildings, prioritizing investment and also prioritizing identification and addressal of mental health issues. What is Pareto Principle or 80-20 Rule? I have written extensively about it in the Divya Bhaskar and there are links to those. However, let me give you a brief overview. What Pareto Principle says is that 80% of the solutions are rooted in 20% of the causes. So when you address the 20% of the areas or causes, the solutions are achieved much better and more effective. This is common in business when 20% of the customers, for example, cover 80% of the sales or in a manufacturing environment, by addressing 20% of the root causes, 80% of the solutions or the problems are fixed. So this is the idea of Pareto Principle. By the way, this is also relevant in our wardrobes. 20% of the clothes, we wear 80% of the time, and the rest 80 are hardly used. So this is a very powerful concept and we apply it to mental health. There are two areas where I will give you examples of how we apply this principle. First is the suicide behavior that includes history of suicide ideation, plan or attempt. Why this is important? Because our young people in India, their primary cause of death is suicide. And unfortunately, nobody wants to talk about it. And therefore, we decided to face this head on and understand the contributors, the drivers and find out how we can prevent it uh, by identifying the root causes. Now, while suicide was decriminalized in India in 2017, Unfortunately, it is still a taboo and not talked about. And the research in the developed countries say that 90% of the individuals who have suicide behavior or history have had mental health problems. Uh, let me talk how we identify the risk factors for suicide behavior and then to address what do we need to do using the idea of 80-20 principle or Pareto. First, uh, and remember, we have to look at the primary contributors. So, about 70% of the individuals with a history of suicide behavior have been exposed to severe levels of childhood trauma. So I'm talking about adults who have history of suicide attempts, thoughts or plans. When you go back to their childhood, most of them, 70% of them have been exposed to severe level of trauma. We have a set of conditions that childhood trauma include, uh, total 16 conditions, and most of them, 70% of them have more than eight such experiences while growing up repeatedly. So this is one way to prioritize because we know where it could be starting. Second, when you look at which specific childhood experiences, more than 75% of these individuals with suicide behavior have a history of severe emotional neglect. Uh, emotional neglect is something that most practitioners, psychologists, psychiatrists, mental health, psychotherapists, Ignore. So if you are a mental health practitioner, please note it down. This is not limited. Of course, there is data identifying the role of sexual abuse and physical abuse. However, the trauma of emotional nature has a much bigger role than what is out there in the literature or in the practice. Hardly these questions are asked about the history of emotional abuse and neglect. So please probe that. Also, now going into specific component, not just suicide behavior, but suicide attempt history. More than 80% of the individuals who have had a history of suicide attempt have also had a history of self-harm, which is called non-suicidal self-injury, where the intention is not to take life. However, it's a precursor to a potential risk of suicide behavior and specifically suicide attempt. So by understanding this, we focus on the contributors that can be caught early versus dealing with it after the attempt has been made, which is too late, unfortunately. Finally, 82% of the individuals with a history of suicide attempt have been brought up in a violent family environment. This is something that cannot be ignored. This could be verbal as well as physical violence. And you can link that to other conditions like emotional abuse, physical abuse as well. So by looking at this data, we are able to trace what could be the contributors to increase risk for suicide behavior as well as specifically within suicide behavior, suicide attempt. And again, most of the numbers when you look at, they are 60 to 80 percent focus areas. And this is why it brings the idea of Pareto to life. Uh, to summarize, in suicide behavior, we identify childhood trauma 
and lot of other components as you see on the screen and this includes situations such as increased risk for anxiety depression and also history of irrational decision making so we have a lot more than what i just shared and all of this is integrated into a model so that we can identify the precursors or the risk factors as well as the pathways that lead to increase risk for suicide behavior this is one of the two examples i'm going to talk about